hello everyone good evening to you out there uh, these are really trying times for Nigeria as a country and I'm going to start this video by taking out um, a minute of silence for all of the fallen heroes uh, ranging from the uh, protesters who were protesting peacefully said to be sitting down on the ground at Lekki Tollgate holding the Nigerian flag and singing and who were shot at brutally murdered in cold blood to uh, policemen who became victims of this in fact as I'm talking to you I can hear gunshots you know right in my city close to my house uh, to policemen who became um, victims of the whole of this um, situation in which our nation has been thrown to all the young men and women killed on the streets, killed in their homes, killed while they went out to raid um, way houses with palliatives. Uh, some of them... I this. I got this. I got this. This is your dead man. This is your dead man. More than enough to go around. More than enough to go around. Look at your government. See, see what is being stuck in here. The bags of uh, rice, bags of Gary fell on, on top of them, and some were rescued. Some died while trying, whilst trying to, you know, uh, raid uh, way houses with palliatives. This is not a condemn, a condemnatory speech or call it whatever you want to. I just want to air my views because, you know, I have tried hard to wrap my mind around all that's been happening, and to be able to say, you know, come out and say something. To lend my voice to this show, I have lent my voice, you know, through other of my social media handles, uh, Instagram at the Psychologist NG, Twitter at the Psychologist NG, you know. But I needed to make this video, and it has been one of the most difficult videos yet. So before we go further, to just speak to ourselves, try to reason this entire situation out, and search for a way forward. Let's take the one minute silence for silence for all of these heroes that have fallen. Whilst we are praying mm, that the struggles and the blood that have been shed would not be in vain, that all of this will give birth to a better Nigeria. Souls of all of our heroes fall, fallen, all of our heroes passed, um, rest with the Lord and may the struggles that they started and died for not go in vain may lead to a better Nigeria for our children and for us too I pray in Jesus name amen now so this year has been a tough year the world over starting from the uh, um, COVID-19 um, pandemic spread all around the world like wildfire consuming souls consuming souls for me it was a time of introspection and i want to believe that it was the same for everyone too i mean who would have thought like they have joked that one day uh, a doctor will be entering the bank and the security man will be taking his temperature or who would have thought that you will have your money stashed in both local and foreign accounts you will be sick and yet you'll be unable to fly out of your country into other countries built by human beings like you for medical care. Nobody knew that day would come, but it came. And I think that if we all sit down and have that moment of introspection, I wish, I hope everyone did, that that alone will begin to birth something new in us, a desire to build our own country, a desire to make things work in our country. I mean, I've tried, my, 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 my son asked me today, so, mommy, do we import fuel? And I tried to explain to him how we have crude oil in our soil and we have all it takes to have refineries that can refine this crude oil and yet we don't have. And we have to export crude oil for pitons and import, you know, processed uh, fuel for so much more. I mean, and all of the, 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 the mystery around our lack of manufacturing in Nigeria. And I couldn't find the words to explain. I'm hoping, you know, that 
2020 is the year that marks that change for us. All of this have, that has happened from COVID-19 all the way down to the NSAS saga, which for me was a welcome development. I had been waiting in my spirit for the time when this yoke of bad governance, this yoke of youths um, being used as instruments of political, whatever you want to call them, bringing in people, people who wouldn't, are not accountable, who would loot natural, national resources for personal gains, who will use monies meant for building of infrastructures, meant for the state for personal gains, and yet these same youths will sing their praises and worship them whilst living in penury, in insecurity, uh, uh, no good roads and all of that. I was waiting for the time when we'll be tired. Like the Bible said in uh, Genesis chapter, uh, is that 17 um, or so? That when Esau becomes tired of the yoke, when he becomes restless, that he will break the yoke off his neck. That Esau was going to serve his brother, Jacob, who was the younger brother. But when he got tired, when he got distressed, when he got, you know, when he decided to take dominion, he would break the yoke of his younger brother off his neck. I was waiting for the day when the Nigerian youth would get tired of living as we are living and they would rise up to break the yoke off their necks. Rise up to say, listen, we can demand accountability. Listen, we really do want to change and we're ready to stake our lives for it. I was waiting for that day to come and thank goodness in my lifetime the day came. So for me, the end such protest that it started peacefully organized and everything was a welcome development and i believe in my spirit that the message that has been passed across by our youths the 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 the, 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 the uproar of voices that we've heard will not fade away that they will produce that change some way somehow some way somehow that this all of this all of this that we have experienced from the answers to what it became hijacked as uh, you know we prefer to to say by hoodlums i wouldn't call them hoodlums you know these i think are youths they are nigerian youths they're children they're they're young people who should have been given good education that will make them understand that there is no profit in destroying the little whatever little it is we have that's infrastructure that looting is a crime no matter how you know i mean these are youths if they were trained if they were even in school if they were in school, the universities were open, probably this thing, this whole protest thing wouldn't have taken the dimension it ended up taking. If they were engaged, gainfully employed somewhere, and they had any form of hope for a future in Nigeria, perhaps this would not happen. So I'm believing that all of this will produce a better Nigeria, that these voices that have been heralded would not go down without producing results, that the blood that have fallen to the soil of Nigeria are crying out for vengeance that indeed it will produce some kind of change you know look at the look at look at the videos of young young ladies i watched some videos of young ladies pulling down air conditioners from uh you know government uh, structures and, and i'm wondering these are women ordinarily women won't do this but what what it is what is it that has led this ones into this kind of actions well the ENSAS protest came, the statement has been made, and I'm even happy with the progress with how the youths are trying to elect leaders, come up with, you know, the youth party, trying to make something out of this ENSAS protest, and by the grace of God, a way forward will come. The eventual looting, destruction of life and property that came forward that is highly regretted, highly regretted, that's not good for us. And if perhaps there's anyone out there still feeling like that's the way to go. This is begging you. That is not the way to go. We don't have much. Destroying the little that we have cannot be good for us. We have all the means and all the methods we can exploit to make our voices heard. Let us stop the destruction. Let us stop the killing of innocent lives. Destroying police stations. Killing policemen. These are people's fathers, people's children, people's brothers and sisters. Let us stop all of the violence. Let us stop all of the violence. And let us take this to another level. I want to say to every one of us out there, what's the way forward? How can we continue to protest? Now for the students in the university, that's my first catchment area. 
when you go to school and you find lecturers asking you to pay money to get grades these people are also robbing you of your future because you're in school to learn to develop your intellectual capacities to develop your capacity for critical thinking so that you can decipher between good and evil so that you can create so that you can create a life for yourself using your intellectual capacity so that you can search for problems around you have acquired the problem solving skills to profess solutions to these problems and earn money from them like the likes of Mark Zuckerberg and the others have done I know the environment is not uh, conducive it's not encouraging but you can make something out of nothing so when you get to school and lecturers are asking you to pay money to get grades that's the time to protest that's the time to say no I will sit down I will read my books I will toil I will acquire get every, not every knowledge I, 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 I came here to get and I, will, I insist on passing through hard work not through paying money not true because Imagine if every young person we have in the next 20 years learned nothing but paid their way through school. What will be the state of the nation? What will be the state of our educational institutions? For the young ladies, I mean, begin to say no. Begin to say no. When someone says you have to sleep with me to get grace, begin to say no. I will read and I will pass. And if I cannot pass this time by reading hard, let me fail and try again. And Lift up your voice. Report those people who will want to victimize you unnecessarily. But it starts by doing right. And for all of us workers in our different offices, we all know what is obtainable in these offices. These offices are not manned by ghosts. They are not manned by uh, the governors only. When you go to a local government office, when you go to a regular office, a clerk in the office is meant to search out a file for you. He will insist that you oil his palms, that you give bribe for him to search out those files. That is wrong. That is corruption. Let's begin to say no to corruption everywhere we find ourselves. Like it has been said time and time again, you must be the change that you seek to see. If you cannot do things right, nobody else can. So in our niches, in our little offices, in our remote spheres of influence, let us seek to do right. Let us stand for right. Let us stand for right. Let us refuse to compromise. Let us accept it's going to be difficult. But let us decide to earn money and to make a living the right way. Don't give in to corruption. Don't ask for bribe to carry out your duties. Yes, you're not being well paid, but so is your neighbor from whom you're seeking bribe. It's not just the police on the road asking for bribe, and we know that. You know, in your offices, seek to do right. When you're meant to be at work, be at work. Carry out your duties faithfully. And then at your spare time, let us go back to the things that will cushion the effect of the hard economic realities of our times. Let us go back to subsistence farming. You have land around you. Plant something. It, I remember when we were growing up, most of the vegetables we ate came from my mother's garden, from her farms around the house. And that, you know, did a lot to cushion the effects of uh, um, uh, insufficient uh, uh, resources, you know. Let us go back to subsistence farming. Everybody, it has dignity in farming. There's dignity in production at whatever level you can. Begin to farm vegetables again. Begin to farm maize. Begin to farm uh, pumpkin, ogu. Begin to do something, something else. Buy and sell. I mean, during this whole lockdown, no payment of salaries and all that, I had to try my hand at other things as well. And I saw how we've been deceiving ourselves that white-collar jobs what was what, what was dignifying, was what we needed to survive. Yes, when you have the skills and you have seek those white-collar jobs and do them, but don't limit yourself to white-collar jobs. Buy and sell. Look at your environment. What are the problems that need solutions? Profit solutions and demand money. I mean, money is good and it feels good to use when it is earned legitimately when you provide services when you you know you contribute to society when you're you're building society and you're earning out of it that kind of money is sweet to spend and i'm sure that the grace of god will be with you when you spend that kind of money but not when you are ripping off the nation not when you are denying other people of resources of their their rights whilst you're using resources that are meant for the populace you know to, to to satisfy the needs of i mean who did this to us may god teach us to number this so we can apply our hearts to wisdom you take money meant for building roots and 
build mansions abroad that you get to stay just a few days uh, in the entire year whilst people are dying because there are no roads people are dying because there are no uh, pipe bomb water people are dying because the hospitals are, are, are empty because there's no staff in the hospital because there are no drugs in the pharmacies let us take a rethink life is temporal we are only going to be on this earth for a limited number of time there's just so many houses you can live in at a particular point in time build people around you build people around you use resources for what they are meant for be the change be the change pick up against uh, corruption as much as you can and refuse to be the, in fact the best way to bring about this change is you refusing to be corrupt right there in your home right there in your office insist on doing the right thing that's the only way we can bring about the change in our nation it starts with me it starts with you i've made a decision to stand for right i've made a decision for change you make that decision and together we will see a new nigeria being um evolving you know we hope we hope that all these are started we can't even understand it completely yet we can't say we know the solution but as we stand for right as we refuse to continue to be in captivity we refuse to continue to keep quiet while we are being oppressed we refuse to be a part of the problem and decide to be a part of the solution as we do all this a better nigeria will smile at us someday let's keep up the fight we need to end here for today and we'll find time to continue to speak ourselves into a better nigeria thanks for tuning in with me uh once again we weep for you families that are grieving for lost ones families that are grieving for lost ones the blood innocent blood that has been shed destinies that have been cut off we bleed we bleed for you we stand with you that morning for this blood that's been shed nigeria will be better we all pray and we'll all work towards it thank you please um join hands with me uh be the change you want to see and welcome to a new nigeria